Approximately 18 months ago, in the fall of 2017, my 64-year-old brother Mike informed me that he had been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. He also told me that he had received a priesthood blessing from his home teacher and that he had met with his bishop. He later texted me a picture of the Oakland, California temple taken from the hospital where he was receiving treatment with the caption, look what I, look what I can see from my hospital room. I was as surprised by his comments about home teachers, priesthood blessings, bishops, and temples as I was about the cancer. You see, Mike, a priest in the Aaronic priesthood, hadn't regularly attended church for close to 50 years. As a family, we were almost as intrigued with his spiritual progress as we were with his progress in fighting the cancer, largely due to his now frequent questions about the Book of Mormon, the sealing power, and life after death. As the months passed and the cancer spread, a need for additional and more specialized treatment eventually brought Mike to Utah and the Huntsman Cancer Center. Shortly after his arrival, Mike was visited by John Holbrook, the ward mission leader of the ward that served the care facility where he was now living. John commented that it was obvious to me that Mike was a son of God and that they quickly developed a bond and a friendship which led to John becoming Mike's de facto ministering brother. There was an immediate invitation to have the missionaries visit, which my brother politely declined. But a month into their friendship, John asked again, explaining to Mike, I think you'd enjoy hearing the gospel message. This time the invitation was accepted, leading to meetings with the missionaries as well as visits with Bishop John Sharp, whose conversations eventually led Mike to receiving his patriarchal blessing 57 years after his baptism. In early December of last year, following months of procedures, Mike decided to stop the cancer treatments, which were causing severe side effects and just to let nature take its course. We were informed by his doctor that Mike had approximately three months to live. In the meantime, the gospel questions continued, as did the visit and support of his local priesthood leaders. On our visits with Mike, we often saw an open copy of the Book of Mormon on the bedstand as we discussed the restoration of the gospel, priesthood keys, temple ordinances, and even the eternal nature of man. By mid-December, with his patriarchal blessing in hand, Mike actually appeared to be gaining strength, and his prognosis of at least another three months seemed likely. We even made plans for him to join us for Christmas, for New Year's and beyond. On December 16th, I received an unexpected call from Bishop Sharp, who informed me that he and the stake president had interviewed Mike, had found him worthy to receive the Melchizedek priesthood, and asked when I would be available to participate. The ordinance was scheduled for that Friday, December 21st. When the day arrived, my wife Carol and I arrived at the care facility and were immediately met in the hallway near his room and informed that Mike had no pulse. We entered the room to find the patriarch, his bishop, and his stake president already waiting. And then Mike opened his eyes. He recognized me and acknowledged that he could hear me and was ready to receive the priesthood. Fifty years after Mike had been ordained a priest in the Aaronic priesthood, I had the privilege, assisted by his local leaders, to confer the Melchizedek priesthood and ordain my brother to the office of elder. Five hours later, Mike passed away, crossing the veil to meet our parents as a holder of the Melchizedek Priesthood. Just one year ago, a call was extended by President Russell, Russell M. Nelson for each of us to care for our brothers and sisters in a higher, holier way. Speaking of the Savior, President Nelson taught that because it is His Church, we as His servants will minister to the One just as He did we will minister in His name, with His power and authority, and with His loving kindness. In response to that invitation from a prophet of God, remarkable efforts to minister to the One are taking place all over the world. In both coordinated efforts, as members faithfully fulfill their ministering assignments, as well as what I'll call impromptu ministering, as so many demonstrate Christ-like love in response to unexpected opportunities. In our own family, we witnessed up close this type of ministering.